New, new subscribers! subscribers! We got Bill Paul from St. Louis. Uh, from He goes by Ted. We got Israel. Oh, is it Israel? We yeah. got. Uh, that was my best Hebrew. How was it? I thought it was very good. I think it was awful. Giamani from uh, New Zealand. And the Christy from New Jersey, France. Lots <laughs> of friends. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome, Welcome to Wake, to wake up. up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Jason. I'm uh, Pastor Scott. Got a scripture today. We're going to be in Hosea chapter 10 and verse 11. Hosea. Hosea. Blessed be the rock. Jose, or is it Hosanna? Hosanna. Oh, dang it. Jose. Many, many bricks writes, I like many bricks. It's I spelled M E N N Y. No, many bricks bricks. says, no singing. Uh, I hope I said that right. <laughs> and Stop I did, that. Stop that. Stop that. There'd be no singing. Uh, Never Jane Johnson many. says, that was exactly what I needed to hear today. And I think she was talking about my song. Oh, nice. I was singing. Yeah. Thank you. Ho Hosea. Uh, Hosea. Yeah. Maybe we need some more. Oh, wait, who did you sing last week? You were Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers, yeah? and I okay. did a Kenny. Susan H. writes, uh, suggests Perfect Strangers sitcom music. What is Perfect Strangers? I don't remember I that don't show. I don't remember that show. I don't Was remember. it the 70s, 80s, 90s? I guess we could have Googled that. Oh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll look it up for you. Uh, when you put information at the bottom of the screen, can you leave it up there longer? I can't read that fast. Yes. Mahalo. Yes, we are on that. Starting today, we're leaving it up longer. Leave that there. Don't, Don't move, move it. it. Don't move it. What's the scripture today? Hosea chapter 10 and verse 11. Hosea. And I'm kind of just kind of jumping in here. Uh, there's a, a little bit of a, pro a prophecy. Ephraim is a trained heifer that loves to thresh grain. But it sounds like a, like a, <laughs> the red fish, blue fish, my fish, you fish. But I harnessed her fair neck. I will make Ephraim pull a plow. Judah shall plow. So Ephraim's pulling the plow, Judah shall plow. Now there's some meaning here, so we're going to actually study. Okay, because okay, so, it threw me off a so, lot of it because it did sound like a children's book. Ephraim was was uh, the son of Joseph that got the double blessing, the yes. double portion. In fact, his name means a, double fruitfulness. Boop. That was the boop. So fruitfulness becomes out, double fruitfulness, the blessing of God and His anointing on our lives uh, becomes our heifer, our burden. Right, the anointing breaks the yoke. Okay. So what I'm carrying in my life is, not, is meant to be light and easy. It's Jesus. Right. So what I carry is not burden or work. I carry double fruitfulness. I carry the favor oh, and blessing cool. of God. Right. Okay, then it says this, Judah shall plow. So this is my plow, the double spirit and portion okay. of God on my life. Okay. The double fruitfulness. Sure. The double blessing. Right. That's my plow. That's what I'm plowing. And I'm going to plow, but Judah's going to do the plowing. So Judah means praise. Okay, so my... So my thankfulness and gratefulness to God, all that double fruitfulness on my life, is what plows the and hard like, places in my life. And what I like is the word plow gets things ready for a harvest. Oh, come it's on. It's digging up the stuff in my... So I've noticed this in my own life. Oftentimes, when things aren't going... When things are hard and the, the ground is rocky and hard... Yep. ...in my life, things just aren't right. I begin to praise God. God, thank you so much. You mean complain. You begin to complain. You know when you complain, what you do is you basically just throw harder. You actually concrete it. You make it harder. <laughs> you do, don't you? You do. When you complain about the hard things in life, it actually gets worse. Oh, doesn't it? It just gets heavier. You ever do that? Like you're like, oh, really? Another thing today? Yeah. Another thing? And then your day gets, e your day doesn't get any better. It just gets harder. It's not that it's hard so things hard. won't come. It's our response that becomes important. Right. Right when the hard things come, I don't I don't complain about it, but instead I forget. I, I get on I my plow it. I get on my my yoke. I get on my my plow. Right. My plow is I'm doubly fruitful. Right. Like, this doesn't get to serve. I I have a double blessing. I have a double portion of my life. I'm like Elisha for crying out loud, right. carrying the 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 blessing of God on my shoulders. Right. right. So uh, authority, spirit of God, my ability to confess and speak and see that mountain move. This is how I'm walking through life. And then what do I do? I get my praise on. Thank oh. you, Jesus, that you go before me. Thank you, Father God, that you've already been here, that, that Lord, that you've already prepared success for me. Thank you, Father, that goodness Jesus. and mercy follow me all the days of my life. Now what's happening? And the hard you things. People. Did you like my sound effect? I absolutely loved your sound effect. Not as bad as your, your uh, dubstep. Your dubstep was the best I've ever seen in my life. So, so 
we're, Lake has put in sprinklers, and me and Jason have put in our share of sprinklers over our days. Yeah. Right? So I come over, and here he is. He's in the back, and he's... Be now, just gravity. so you know, Arizona ground. Is, just tell him about Arizona ground. It's 90% it's, it's concrete. <laughs> No, really. When you're you better to, off what happens on the when pavement. you go to dig a pool, they go, oh yeah, it costs this much. And then every time they come back and they go, hey, we hit our ground. I go, that's a surprise. It's a hard dig. It's another We're thousand to, dollars. Yeah. Because it's can, a hard You can dig. scratch the ground with a shovel. It, that's what it does. It, it makes, like, that, makes noise. that white concrete. Goes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Lakin had already been working for an hour and he had about this much of a 50 foot trench we need. And I he's know. Just I've with had that those shovel. Days. He's and just how, sweating. What was the temperature outside? Oh, it was nice. It was like 180. Because why do we always put sprinklers in when it's 180 degrees out? Why don't we put it out? Why, why not put sprinklers in <laughs> we, in the winter? We have I don't eight know. months of great weather. I don't know. I don't know why we do it. But we all do it. Go so on. So I go, son. Home Depot rents something called a, a, a trencher. A trencher. Yeah. He's like, what is that? I go, <gasps> son. I go, trust me. Yeah. He's as as like, I'll pay. Isn't that what God does? I'll pay. Yeah. And we get this trencher, and you. Bop, 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 and you blub, and then you just go, you pull, all you have to do is this, and then you actually got to hold on to the blessing. It, because it, it'll, it'll, it'll take you into trench. The, you got to hold on, because this is what your praise does. It literally grabs you and begins to propel you into the thing. You're like, oh my gosh, and it's just digging everything up. And this is what your praise does. Oh, I, it takes I agree. something that is hard and seems impossible. But when I begin, take it from people that have done it before, you begin to say, my God is going to come through. My God is able. My this God can the do the day. day. This, this is, is the day that the Lord has made. made. That the Lord <laughs> has made. I will yeah. rejoice. What's happening? It's Digging that up. Yeah. It's, it's, it's when getting... Jehoshaphat sent the singers first, they, they sang, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Like, what are you doing? What kind of army you're tearing that up, way? You're tearing up the ground. You're, right. you're sending out God's armies in front of you to make the path smooth. So what did God say? He said, I'm going to make the hills level and I'm going to make the path straight. This is what God does when he goes before you. When, when, when everybody went through that real estate thing, the thing that I went to immediately when my life was really hard was I, I first thing I said, God, first thing, and I would just do praise. And the first thing I got up in the morning, I would just play praise and worship music. And it was like 10 minutes, and I would just get my day started mm -hmm. with the praise. Mm -hmm. Just reminding myself of how good God is, how great God is, the things that God is working behind the scenes in my life. And it seemed to till up things in, in my life. And that's what tilling does. Sometimes it even tills up the garbage in you and the bad habits and the wrong things and the wrong thinking. He just gets all that in there and works it up. And now what can happen now is now we can get the seed ready for the harvest. That's right. And it'll grow so much better. It'll take root so much easier. It's so, it's so much more beautiful. It just comes out so good. Yeah. And so we just encourage you today to let praise plow. Let it plow. Let it do the heavy lifting for you. Go into your today, no matter how discouraging it might look. Maybe you're Trench facing it. impossibilities. Maybe what you're facing today is absolutely awful. Send the praise first. Get things. Anybody can praise God when everything's good. Mm -hmm. Can we be thankful to God when it looks like it's impossible? Because it's in those places that the hard things get ground up and tilled up. What is one of the most powerful things you can do over your marriage, Dave, if, if your marriage is rocky? Oh, praise. Right? Send thankfulness into your wife. I'm so thankful for you. You're the best woman. I've, you, I, you're unbelievable. I forgot how good you are. I, but you know you're what? You're so pretty. You're pretty in the morning. You're but, pretty in the evening. Do you just say it to her? No, you say it to everyone around you. And you say it to yourself all throughout the day. Oh, yeah, come on. Wives out there, same thing. If you begin to praise in your mind, until uh -huh. it, it tills up that bitterness and that those, all that junk that's gotten in there over the years that is hindering the relationship. Yeah. And it dictates your response. You're like, I don't know why. He's the only one I respond that way to in my whole world. I'm, I see it, but I, it just comes out of me. Yeah. You got to till it up. Yeah, maybe just start off with the phrase, you know, he's not that bad. <laughs> And you just go from there. You know what I mean? Like that literally is a good phrase. <laughs> He's not that bad. It's 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 at least a, it's a cup of water. Just give him a little like a little uh, drink of water from the other day's text message. Not, yeah. There's, yeah, at least he's not you know. Give what's him a his, smile. Like you can even do that. At least I don't have Sally's husband. Yeah, that's right. I don't know who Sally's husband is, but we need Sally's husband to be on the forefront of your mind because he's an awful husband. And then Sally has he's to go. He's even worse. At least I don't have June's husband. And like oh, everyone, June's husband. Oh, we don't even know what to do with a, that guy. That's a mess. <laughs> That is an absolute mess. <laughs> Let's get thankful in our lives and watch things turn around. Watch that hard thing get broken up. Watch the path get easier.
Amen. You want to pray for the day? Father God, we're just thankful to you. We praise you, Father God, in the midst of storms. We praise you in the middle of trial. We praise you in the fire. We praise you in the flood because we know that you are our vindicator. You are our great reconciler. You are our, sa our savior. You are salvation from the pit. You are peace in the storm. You are love in the midst of hate. You are mercy when I don't deserve it. You are grace when I don't have any grace left. I thank you, Father God. You are my source. You are my Jehovah Jehovah. Jaira, my shepherd, my rock. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Watch this clip. I am who God says I am, and I can do what God says I can do. Amen. Jesus is in me, and he is the champion. He is amen. the champion within amen. me. And when I have that new blood, what happens is now a new life happens. That blood transforms my life. It's just like the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation is come, the old is gone, the new is here. And that's spiritually what happens. When you became born again, you got into that bloodline. That old bloodline was gone, and that new bloodline, you line up with the victory in the name of Jesus. Amen? And when you do that, there's a different authority and power that comes on you. You just kind of walk in it. You realize when you became born again, when you accepted Jesus into your life, I, I bet I could ask anyone in here, you felt that your life had changed. That's because you stepped into a different realm. Spiritually, you have a different um, authority and, and, and different power that runs through the inside of you. And, and what happens because of that is you get different results in life. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and be in church this weekend wherever your church is at. That's right.